I wanted to talk today about frost and freeze protection because there's a lot of little science about why we need frost. And we're going to see some this weekend. So if your parents have garden, gardens and you're a gardener or your parents are watching right now, I think tonight the mountains we're going to see a freeze, but tomorrow night there's a potential for frost. But here's a fascinating thing about frost. It can happen when the air temperature is actually above freezing. That's a big puzzling fact for a lot of people. Like, why do I have frost on my car or my roof when it's 38 degrees outside? Well, it's a really good question. It has a lot to do with radiation budgets and how surfaces warm and cool. So let's talk first a little bit about how frost forms. So we first have to look at how frost is actually calculated. Now, frost can happen down at the ground um, where the temperature is five to sometimes 10 degrees cooler than the surface. You remember the air temperature is taken about two meters up. That's, you know, roughly about five to six feet, depending on um, where you're at. So it's above the ground and you're measuring the temperature of the air. Down at the ground or the surface, it can cool just like on a hot sunny day when the sun is beating down on the surface and the blacktop or the sand at the beach <laughs> or the metal on your car gets way hotter than the temperature, that can happen at night in reverse. When something has a view of the sky, it loses what we call long wave radiation. Everything gives off long wave radiation. If you've ever seen an infrared camera or FLIR, um, you can kind of see the, the shape of things in color. Warmer objects are kind of hot. They're kind of orange, red, yellow. Cooler objects are bluish. Well, we can see everything has some kind of heat. So on nights where we have clear skies, if you have an object out in the middle of the yard, it can radiate heat away from everything. So let me show you how this whole thing works. During the day, that incoming solar radiation comes down. Now, some of it is reflected by the atmosphere, clouds, and the Earth's surface. So some of it bounces straight back up. Now, some is absorbed by the atmosphere, where there's all kinds of different gases um, that absorb it. And then some is absorbed by clouds. Um, some is conducted back up through rising air. But here's the interesting thing about sunlight, and this is always a trick question I like to give people, is when you tell people that the sun does not heat our air, it kind of blows your mind. It's a trick question. The sun does not directly heat our air. What happens is the sun heats the ground, and then the ground heats the air. That's why it's warmer at the lower elevations than it is at higher elevations. Because if you think about it, the sun is out in space all the time. The sun is out all the time atop of the atmosphere, but it's 40, 50, 60 below zero up there. Why? Because there's nothing for the sun to heat up and then warm the air. Plus, you need something in the air to get warm. So that's why during the day it can get so warm near the ground. And at night, we lose that. Now, as you see in the graphic here, if we have clouds or some kind of cover, it can trap that. This is how the greenhouse effect worked as well. The more greenhouse gases we have, it traps more of that incoming solar radiation. So on a night like we're going to have tomorrow night, where we're going to have a frost or freeze, anything to stay near the ground. That is why we're going to have frost tomorrow. But there's things you can trick the plants around into thinking that there is clouds, or in this case, something else. So we're going to try something cool here. Um, we're going to go a little techie here. I'm going to try a secondary camera today. Let's see if this works. Look, we have another camera. And I'm going to show you a couple things you can do around the house to protect yourself from a frost or freeze. So what I have today is an infrared thermometer. I'm going to flip the camera around here. Just my backyard here. And we're going to take some readings. So we're going to take some readings. Infrared thermometer doesn't measure the temperature of the air, it measures the temperature of surfaces. So for instance, um, if I aim this at my hand right here, you can see a little laser right there, you can see 77.9. The air temperature is 59 degrees right now. If I walk around my yard, um, I can point it to different things. We'll try the camera again here. Let's see. Flip it around. We'll try Flip to the secondary camera. I won't, this time I won't walk as far away from everything. So what I was going to do is real quickly show you some of the plants we have here. So if I were to take my thermometer and aim it at my plant, this is the bean plant, by the way, that we grew in the bag in one of our previous weather schools. So aim it there. 
59.9, so that's pretty close to the air temperature. So how could I keep this plant warmer tonight? Well, one of the things I can do is cover it up at night to trap the long wave radiation. But there's something else I can do. I can actually take water, take my watering can, water the plant, also water these. There's a little thing in there. Okay, we'll put the water in there. Now that water is going to be probably a 50s or 60s. Definitely down into the plant and get pulled up, or into the soil, excuse me, then get pulled up into the plant. So tonight, this will cool, or even tomorrow, this will cool much slower than, let's say, um, a plant that's completely dry. The thing about water is that water will actually retain heat much longer than something dry. So if you have plants away from the house, something like that, you need to water it tomorrow night or put a cover over it to trap the warmth in there. Now, plants that will do okay, plants near the house. Any of those plants, they will be okay because they'll get heat from those rocks from my, from my patio and the side of the house. Anything out in the middle of the yard is going to have a little bit more of a trouble. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tonight and tomorrow is go outside water everything heavily before the frost or freeze comes in to retain that long wave radiation. The other thing you can do is put a blanket on it or cover it up. Just like in your bed, that's going to help keep you warm. So let's see if we can switch back to my other camera here. Go back this way. There we go. So that, that was my remote camera. You guys can see here. I'm trying some new technology. We'll see the bed. We'll see. So frost and freeze protection is all about what we call radiation budgets. Sunlight gets absorbed by everything during the day and at night, we're trying to hold it in. We're trying to keep it in the ground, keep in the plants, or in our case, if we're cold, we try to keep it in our body. Now, our body generates heat, so that kind of helps, but anything outside doesn't generate its own heat. You try to save the heat that was stored during the day. Now, today's cloudy. We're not getting a lot of sunlight, but tomorrow during the day, we'll get a whole bunch. So a good way to protect your plants, protect your vegetables, protect everything in your yard, heavily water or covered. I'm going to talk a lot about this today at 4 o'clock as well on WCNC. We've got some planes flying overhead so you guys can hear those. But it's a really cool way to kind of think about how plants work, how the sun works, and how radiation budgets. And remember, radiation is not a scary thing. We're bombarded by it every day. Shortwave radiation is hitting us right now in the form of sunlight and at night. Everything's giving us long wave radiation. It's the way that energy travels. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And if you can manipulate it, you can have a cold and frosty night.